Hello everyone, today we will understand the determinants of occlusal morphology. These determinants will be horizontal and vertical determinants of occlusal morphology. Occlusal morphology of posterior teeth includes two aspects that is height and the shape of the ridge, height of the cusp and shape of the ridges. So first height of the cusps and shape of grooves. So first of all, let us understand the horizontal determinants and horizontal determinants determine the shape shape of the grooves how our occlusal morphology will be there in the grooves so let's understand the horizontal determinants are first distance from rotating condyle second distance from mid sagittal plane third intercondylar distance and fourth is lateral translation of the man mandible or lateral translation movement so let's understand them one by one these are the horizontal determinants we will discuss the vertical determinants later so first is distance from rotating condyle. How rotating condyle determines the shape of grooves? Let's understand that. Suppose we are talking about this molar, okay? And our A is rotating condyle. Suppose this is rotating condyle. So, so our mandible will move this way, right? Now suppose this is my tip of the pen is our maxillary molar cusp centric cusp of maxillary molar now suppose this is the distance okay and now our mandible is rotating this way right so this will be the direction of the molar of opposite side and the pathway the path is mediotrusive path so this mediotrusive movement will be like this this is the mediotrusive mediotrusive movement suppose it is a now, if our rotating condyle is B, then our mandible will move like this, right? So, our mandible will move like this. And this will be the lateral path for this molar. So, this is the mediotrusive path of this molar and this will be the lateral path. We can Now, what is the effect of the distance from the rotating condyle of this molar? So, if we go away from the rotating condyle, suppose we are going here now what happens to this teeth when we rotate the mandible so again we will make an arc from here to here this way so if mandible is if mandible is moving in this direction then arc will be produced in this direction right so this will be the arc similarly if mandible is moving in this direction then this will be the rotating condyle and in in that case this will be the angle so you can see that as we move away from this rotating condyle the angle the angle between between lateral trusive and medial trusive path increases this angle increases this is lesser than this angle so as we move away from this rotating condyle the angle increases right second is distance from the mid sagittal plane similarly this is the mid sagittal plane let's understand how this and uh, the mid distance from the mid sagittal plane affect the morphology of the teeth so this is these are three different positions from mid sagittal plane. Let's understand this. First, here. So, this will be the case. Mandible is moving here. So, path made by maxillary molars will be this. For this, the same. And for this, like this. Okay. These are three paths made by A. That is mediotrusive movement. A is mediotrusive. And B is lateral trusive. Okay. Similarly, let's understand how B, how lateral trusive movement affect the anatomy. So this will be the case in this molar. This will be the case in this molar. And this will be the case in this molar. So as we 
move away from the mid-sagittal plane, the angle increases. See, this angle, this angle, and this angle. So as we move away, the distance from the mid-sagittal plane, as we move away from the mid-sagittal plane, the angle between mediotrusive and lateral trusive path increases. That is, it is directly proportional to the angle between mediotrusive and lateral trusive path. Right? Third is intercondylar distance. How intercondylar distance affects the angle between mediotrusive and lateral trusive path? Let's understand that. So this is A1, this is A2, this is A3. Similarly, B1, B2, B3. Let's take this molar as an example. So for this molar, when mandible moves this way, this will this will be the mediotrusive path. So suppose Mandible is moving in this direction, so the path made by maxillary molar will be like this, right? So this will be the B1. So path made by A1 will be this, okay? This will be the path made by A1. If we consider B, let's let's see what happens. So here we make another example, another arc. This will be the B2. And for A, A2, this is the angle between A1 and B1. And this is the angle between A2 and B2. Let's understand what happens in A3. So this is A3 when angle increases. When the distance increases, this will be the path. Similarly, B3. So this angle is B3. And A3. So as the intercondylar distance increases, the angle between mediotrusive and lateral path decreases. So it is inversely proportional to. Right? So these are horizontal determinants. Last is lateral translation moment. As lateral translation moment, suppose this mandible moves slightly here. A1. When during the rotation, the rotatory move, the rotating condyle comes here. In that case also, the angle will increase. Because again, the distance will be increased. Distance from the rotating condyle will increase here. So angle will be increased. So this is the, these are the horizontal determinants of occlusal morphology in case of fixed partial nature, in case of posterior teeth. Now let's understand the vertical determinants of occlusal morphology. These are the vertical determinants of occlusal morphology. As we have seen that these are condylar guidance, anterior guidance, plane of occlusion, curve of speed, and lateral translation moment. Condylar guidance, as the condylar guidance becomes steeper, vertical determinants means the height of the cusp, right? They determines the height of cusp. Horizontal determinants, horizontal determinants determine the shape of fossa shape of grooves that determines the shape of grooves and fossa whereas the vertical determinant de determines the height of cusp right so condylar guidance as it becomes steeper the cusp becomes sharper or height increases as if the condylar guidance is shallower then the cusp height will be decreased lesser and the cusp will be shallower. Similarly, anterior guidance, if anterior guidance increases, the cusp will be sharper. Anterior guidance depends on over jet, over jet and overbite. As overbite increases, anterior guidance increases. But as over jet increases, if over jet increases, then anterior guidance 
decreases so here over z is more so anterior guidance will be reduced and here over by it is also le less that's why anterior guidance is less so anterior guidance if anterior guidance is higher then cusp will be sharper and if anterior guidance is lesser then cusp will be shallower third is plane of occlusion if the plane of occlusion is parallel to the condylar guidance then the cusp height will be shallower if it is not parallel to condylar guidance if it has some cant or if it has some degrees then the cusp will be sharper fourth is curve of spi if curve of spi is smooth or it is not very much acute very much sharp then we can afford to give sharp cusps we can give higher cusp cusp with height because then they can slide with each other even if we have some curve because we have some curve this cusp can slide with each other but if the cusp is acute so much then we have to provide the shallower cusp otherwise they cannot slide with each other so this is the curve of spi so if curve of spi is acute then the shallower or short then the short cusp will be given last is lateral translation moment when lateral translation moment is there lateral translation moment depends on the lateral ligament as we have seen in previous video that we have temporomandibular ligament which is which has inner horizontal component this inner horizontal component determines the lateral shift of the mandible if that ligament is loose then our mandible will shift on one side if this shift is more that is lateral shift is more then we have to provide short cusp because we have to give some freedom for the movement if we do not have any movement if the shift is not there then we can provide sharper cusp or cusp with height so these are the vertical determinants of the occlusion so these are horizontal and vertical determinants of occlusion and they determine the anatomy of posterior teeth thank you